Value in geology rarely announces itself. It forms slowly, concentrates quietly, and reveals itself only where natural forces repeat the same actions over immense spans of time. Most people believe gold panning is about luck, about randomly scooping sediment and hoping something flashes back. But experienced prospectors know better. Gold does not move randomly, and it does not stop randomly. It follows rules, physical rules controlled by density, water energy, gravity, and geology. In this ProGems documentary, we examine why certain gold panning locations consistently outperform others, even when they appear ordinary, untouched, and overlooked by most people. This is not about secret tools or shortcuts. It's about understanding how gold naturally concentrates in river systems and why some simple locations quietly accumulate far more gold than expected. Gold is one of the densest naturally occurring metals found at Earth's surface. Because of that density, gold behaves very differently from sand, gravel, and lighter minerals once it enters a river system. When gold is released from its original host rock, often quartz veins or mineralized bedrock, it does not travel far unless water energy is extremely high. Even then, gold moves in short, controlled steps, settling repeatedly wherever water velocity drops. This is why gold panning success is never random. Every productive pan reflects a specific reduction in water energy combined with a stable trapping surface. One of the most reliable gold panning spots exists where water slows naturally, but not completely. Inside river bends, behind large rocks, at the downstream edge of gravel bars, and along shallow inside curves, water loses just enough energy to drop heavy materials. Gold settles first, long before black sand or lighter concentrates, these areas may look unremarkable, but geologically they function as natural gold traps. Over time, season after season, flood after flood, gold accumulates there layer by layer, often just inches below the surface. Another overlooked panning zone is where rivers transition in slope. When a river moves from steep to shallow terrain, its carrying power drops suddenly. This is where gold that traveled during high-energy events finally settles. These transition zones often sit far from dramatic scenery. No waterfalls, no exposed bedrock, just calm-looking sediment. Yet these quiet zones can hold gold concentrations far richer than fast-moving water upstream. Gold also responds to micro-features most people never consider. Small depressions in compacted gravel, shallow cracks in clay layers, and subtle changes in sediment color often mark places where gold pauses during transport. Clay is especially important. While clay itself does not contain gold, it acts as a sealing layer, preventing gold from sinking deeper and allowing it to accumulate directly above. When panning sediment just above clay, Results are often significantly better. This is why experienced prospectors do not pan randomly. They read the river the same way a geologist reads rock formations, by observing flow patterns, sediment sorting, and material layering. A productive gold pan is simply confirmation that the underlying geology and hydraulics are working exactly as expected. It's also important to understand why simple gold panning locations continue to replenish. Gold is constantly being released upstream through natural erosion. Every storm, freeze-thaw cycle, and seasonal flood introduces new material into the system. Rivers act like long-term processing machines, sorting, concentrating, and redepositing gold repeatedly. That's why the same simple panning spot can produce gold year after year, even after repeated activity. This is also why crushing tools, chemicals, or heavy equipment are not required for this process. 
Gold panning works because nature has already done the separation. Water, gravity, and time have removed everything unnecessary, leaving behind only the heaviest, most stable materials. From a geological and financial perspective, this is what makes gold panning so powerful. It demonstrates how value concentrates naturally without human intervention. The same principles that govern placer gold formation also govern larger mineral systems, only on different scales. Understanding this process builds real geological intuition, not speculation. In ProGems, we focus on why gold appears where it does, not just where to find it. Because once you understand the rules, every river becomes readable, every pan becomes informed, and every result becomes predictable rather than accidental. Gold panning is not about chasing glitter. It's about recognizing where Earth repeatedly places value and why it does so with such consistency. That is the difference between guessing and understanding. Most people believe gold discovery requires heavy machinery, chemicals, or advanced mining equipment. In reality, some of the most reliable gold indicators are visible long before any tools are ever used. Gold leaves behind unmistakable geological signals, and when you understand how to read them, the ground itself tells the story. This documentary explores how a simple, no-tool observation method can expose a hidden gold pocket by understanding how gold forms, migrates, and concentrates naturally inside host rocks over millions of years. Nothing here relies on guesswork. Everything is grounded in real geological processes that professional prospectors, mining geologists, and field experts have relied on for generations. Gold does not form randomly. It is transported by mineral-rich fluids deep underground, moving through fractures, faults, and zones of weakness in the Earth's crust. As pressure and temperature change, those fluids deposit gold into specific rock structures, locking it inside veins, fractures, and dense host formations. Over time, erosion removes softer surrounding material, leaving behind subtle but powerful surface clues. The first signal often appears as an unusual weight difference. Certain rocks feel heavier than they should for their size. This is not coincidence. Gold is one of the densest natural metals on Earth. And even when finely dispersed, it influences the overall mass of its host rock. Experienced eyes notice this immediately, while most people overlook it entirely. Texture is another critical indicator. Gold-bearing rocks frequently show internal stress patterns, mineralized fractures, and hardened surfaces caused by repeated fluid movement. These textures are not decorative features. They are records of geological activity. Smooth, featureless stones rarely host gold, while fractured, irregular, or quartz-influenced rocks often tell a different story. Quartz plays a central role in natural gold formation. When hydrothermal fluids cool, quartz crystallizes first, creating pathways where gold becomes trapped. These quartz veins can appear dull, stained, or even broken on the surface. Yet internally, they may contain fine gold threads invisible until the rock is examined closely or fractured naturally. The no-tool method relies on recognizing how gold influences the behavior of the rock itself. Subtle changes in color, density, fracture direction, and mineral association act like natural warning signs. These signs become stronger when multiple indicators appear together rather than individually. Another overlooked signal is how a rock breaks. Gold-bearing stones often fracture along mineralized planes, exposing metallic glints, reflective surfaces, or darker mineral inclusions. These breaks are not random. They follow the same pathways once used by gold-rich fluids millions of years ago. Surface staining also matters. Iron oxides, dark mineral crusts, and reddish or brownish discoloration frequently appear where gold systems once operated. While iron alone does not mean gold, the presence of iron staining combined with quartz, density, and fracture patterns significantly raises the probability of gold nearby. One of the most powerful aspects of this no-tool method is pattern recognition. Gold rarely appears alone. It forms as part of a system. When similar rock types repeat across a small area, 
showing the same weight, texture, and mineral traits, it suggests a localized gold pocket rather than a scattered trace. Gold pockets form where geological conditions briefly align perfectly. Pressure dropped, fluid slowed, and gold had time to concentrate rather than disperse. These pockets are often compact, easy to miss, and extremely valuable when identified correctly. The mistake most people make is assuming valuable rocks must look impressive. In reality, gold-bearing stones often appear ordinary, weathered, or even unattractive. Their value lies not in appearance, but in structure, density, and mineral history. Crushing is not required to identify these signs. Breaking stones open is a later step. The no-tool method focuses on selection, choosing which rocks deserve attention before any physical processing begins. This alone saves time, energy, and resources while dramatically increasing success rates. Professional prospectors do not test every rock. They filter intelligently. This method does exactly that by allowing the ground to guide the decision-making process naturally. Gold's resistance to corrosion also leaves subtle clues. Unlike surrounding minerals, gold does not oxidize or degrade. This creates contrast inside fractures and along vein edges, where surrounding material changes but gold remains stable. Over millions of years, erosion moves gold short distances from its source. This means that gold-bearing rocks often stay relatively close to where they formed. Identifying one correct stone can reveal the presence of a much larger system nearby. This is why experienced prospectors stop when others keep walking. They recognize patterns built by time, pressure, and chemistry. Patterns that do not lie. The no-tool method is not about luck. It is about education, observation, and patience. When multiple geological signals align, weight, texture, fracture behavior, quartz association, and surface staining, the probability of gold increases dramatically. This approach has guided countless discoveries long before modern mining existed. It remains effective today because geology has not changed, only awareness has. What appears to be an ordinary stone can represent millions of years of concentrated geological value. Once you learn to read these signals, your relationship with the landscape changes permanently. You no longer see rocks as random objects. You see records. You see systems. You see opportunity. And sometimes those signals lead directly to a hidden gold pocket, exposed not by tools or chemicals, but by understanding how nature works. If this documentary helped you see rocks differently, you're already developing the mindset professionals rely on. Pro Gems exists to help you recognize real geological value through education, not hype.